Hi everyone, my name is Bilal Khan and you are watching Simplified Coding. Paging is a very important thing that is required in your application if you are dealing with large lists of data. In this video, I will explain you how you can use paging with Jetpack Compose. For this example, I have a project already ready that contains all the codes for repository layer, API layer and the composable designs. Because this video is about paging, so I want to stick to paging only. To make things simpler for you, I have uploaded the initial project in the Git that you can clone to follow along with this video. You will find the link in the description. You will also get the complete code of this project in the same repository in a different branch. Now you can pause this video and clone the repository and then you can come back to start the tutorial. To implement paging, I am using this dummy API. It returns a list of users. In our case, the data source is a remote API and I already have the repository ready that will give me this data. As you can see here, I have written a repository implementation. So I will call this function and I will pass the required page and the limit per page. And then this will return me the user's response and inside user's response, I have list of users. So all these things are already ready because we need to call the API to get the paged data. And with the help of this paged data or this user repository, we will create our paging source. So here in this project, I am going to use paging three. And to create a paginated list using paging three, the first thing that we need is our paging source. So let's create a paging source inside the data package. So I will create a new Kotlin file class and I will name it users data source. You can name it whatever you want. The important thing is you need to extend paging source. And for the paging source, we need to define two types. The first one is the key. And for key, you can consider it as the page number. And in our case, it is a number. And that is why I have defined int. And then the model type. So what is the type of your item? So in my case, I am going to display a list of users. So for the type, I will write user here like this. So let's import the user. And now I need to override some functions. So basically I need to override two functions. The first one is get refresh key and the next one is load that will actually load our data. Now first let's define get refresh key and this function will return the page number that we need to fetch. So here first we will find the current page number that is already fetched and to get the page number we will use state dot anchor position. And if it is not null, then we will get the current position. So let's write here position. With the help of this position, we will get the closest position. So we will define page here and we will get state dot closest page to position. So we will pass the position here. Now we will check if the page previous key is not null, so we can write here page priv key. If it is not null, that means we can return the previous page. That means we are scrolling upwards and in this case we need to pass previous key minus one. If it is null, what we will do is we will get the next key and again if it is not null, we will plus one and we will return the value. And for any other case, that means if previous key is null and next key is also null, that means we are at the initial position. And in this case, we can simply return null. So we have covered all the cases. Now, finally, we need to load the actual page list in this load function. And this function will return 
the load result. So if you go to load result, then it is a sealed class and we can use error and page from this load result to return either an error result or a paged result. So let's go back to users data source and here we will fetch the users list and to fetch the users list we need the user repository. So what I will do is I will pass the users repository to this users data source. So I will pass private val repo of type users repository. It is user repository like this. Now with the help of this repo I will fetch the users list. So here I can put a try catch block because API calls may throw an error. So for now I am just catching the exception. So in case we have any error what I will do is I will return load result dot error and for error we can pass a throwable so I can just pass the exception that we caught. Now inside try I will fetch the users list and to fetch the users list I need the page number that we need to fetch. So I will define page equals to params dot key. Now we will get the page number from this params instance and if the key is null that means we are at the initial page. So in this case I will return 1 that means if the key is null we will fetch the first page. Now we will fetch the page. So we will get the response here so val response equals to repo dot get users and we will pass the page and for the limit I am passing 10 you can change the value as per your requirement. Now from the response we will get users list as you can see here and with the help of this users list I will create load result dot page and for page we need to pass data that we have inside this response instance so we have response dot users then we need to pass the previous key and for simplicity I am passing null as the previous key because uh, for this example we are only scrolling forwards. Now we need to pass the next key so we have next key and for the next key we will pass current key that is current page number plus one and if you go to the response object that is users response we are getting the current page here. So what I will do is I will get this value and I will increment it by one. So I will write response dot page plus one here like this. And one more thing we need to do is when we reach the end of the page we will stop hitting the API. So what I can do is I can write here if response dot users is empty that means the users list is coming empty and that means we have reached the end of the page. So in this case so basically I can write here is not empty in that case send response dot page plus one else send null. So when we will reach the end of the page it will stop hitting the API. So we have the load function ready. Now what we need to do is we need to create a pager inside our view model. So go to main view model and here we will define val users pager equals to pager. And for pager we need to pass paging config. So we have paging config. And for this we can pass the page size that is 10 and then we can pass a trailing lambda and here we will define how our paging source is created. So here basically we need to create the instance of users data source. So here we can simply write users data source and it requires the repository that we already have here. So we will pass the repo and from this pager we will get the flow like this. And we will catch this flow inside view model scope. And that's it. 
now we can use this users pager to render our paginated list and to render it we will go to users and i already have the design ready as you can see here i have my user card so what i will do is i will define one more composable that is my user list and it will take the view model because from here we will get our pager so i will get users list equals to view model dot users pager dot collect as lazy paging items so for jetpack compose you need to use this function that is collect as lazy paging items and the rest of the things are same we will just create a lazy column like this we will pass a trailing lambda for the content and here we will call items and you need to use this function that takes lazy paging items as a parameter so we will use this items and for the parameter we will pass users list like this we will pass a trailing lambda and here we will get the actual item and for each item we will render the user card so we will pass item like this so this item can be nullable so what we will do is we will write item dot let i have the null safety here and then user card and it like this so we have our list rendered now i will go to my main activity and here i will call user list like this and i will pass the view model now let's try running the application so you can see it is working absolutely fine and to make sure the list is getting fetched page by page what i will do is i will go to my repository and i will add a delay here so let's add a three seconds delay so it's delayed you can see now we have just first page and then next page and then you can see the pages are getting fetched so here we also need to display a progress bar when the list is getting fetched or when the page is getting fetched so what i will do is i will go to my users composable functions file and here i will define two more composable functions one is for the loader and one is for the error item so when the api returned an error we also need to display error in our list so we need two more functions so i will define composable and then fun loading item uh, for this i can create a box so we need to pass the modifier for the box so we have modifier equals to modifier dot fill max fit wrap content height like this and then alignment that is center so we have center alignment now inside the box i will define a circular progress indicator and for the modifier i will pass modifier dot with let's say 42 dp height is also 42 dp and i can also pass the stroke width let's say it is uh, 5 dp like this and we can also pass some padding so padding let's say we have ATP and that's it so we have circular progress indicator now to render this loading item what I will do is inside my lazy column I will call users list dot load state dot append and I will pass it inside a when so we have some states so we will add the remaining branches and when it is not loading so when it is not loading we do not need to do anything when it is loading we need to render loading item so we will use item and then loading item and when it is error we will render the error item so we have item and then error item that we will create but first 
let's test the loading item so i will run the application again you can see we have a loader here and it is working absolutely fine now for the first time when the application opens and we see the empty screen so we also need to display a loader for that time and to do this what you can do is you can write here uh, i will minimize this so here you can write when user list dot load state dot refresh and here again you will get the same values so when it is not loading we will pass unit for loading we can define a circular progress indicator so i will write uh, let's say item like this and then a box and inside this box i will write circular progress indicator like this and let's run the application again so you can see we have a progress bar and it is working absolutely fine now you can also define one more composable for error state and we can display that error whenever there is an error so this is my error item that i designed here now whenever there is an error what i will do is i will call error item we need to pass the message so for now i am passing some error occurred you can change the message as per the exception that's it now to test this part what i will do is i will go to my repository implementation i will define a where let's say error equals to zero and what i'll do is i will increment the error plus plus and whenever error value is let's say four i will throw an exception so we have throw io exception some error occurred we need a comparison operator here like this and that's all now let's run the application we have the list we have this bottom progress bar and let's scroll down scroll down and you can see we have the error card so it is working absolutely fine so i will delete all these things for now like this forcefully created error you can add these things to test your project and i will also remove the delay and let's go to main activity user list and i think rest of the things are fine so what i will do is i will push this project to get so i will commit and final commit and i will commit and push to this final branch and you can get the code final code from this final branch and you can get the starting code from the start branch so that you can follow along with the video so i think that's all for this video friends i hope you found this video helpful and learned something in case you have any problem confusion or question you can leave it in the comments below and i will see you in the next one bye bye